So in my quest to help everyone watching these tutorials figure out more and more arcade systems, my journey has brought me to Naomi and Naomi 2. These, like always, are still a little confusing, but there are a couple of things that we can do to make things a lot easier. So with the help of Derek, or aka DOS76 from the forums and the script that he made, and the help that he gave me prepping for this tutorial, today on Unbroken Software Studios Tutorial, I'll show you how to get Sega Naomi and Naomi 2 up and running with Demuel. So first things first, we need to download our emulator and then we need to go ahead and download the script that we want to use. So we're going to head on over to the Demuel website, the downloads section of their website, and the link will be in the description below. Currently, we are using the 1808.16 build of Demuel x86. So you're going to go ahead and click on this link here. You're going to navigate to where you want to download your 7-zip. For me, I'm just going to go ahead and download it to my Naomi folder. Even though Demuel emulates more than just Naomi, I'm going to go ahead and just put it in my Naomi folder. This link will also be in the description as well. I'm going to link you guys to the script that DOS76 has created. You're going to go ahead and click download this file. I'm also going to download this zip into my Naomi folder. Over in my Naomi folder, you see here that we have the 7-zip file for uh, Demuel uh, 07A. So I'm going to right click that, extract to Demuel 07A underscore 1808.16. So it's going to create this folder here. And then we also downloaded the demuel.zip. I'm actually going to go ahead and move that over into the main folder as this is where we're going to need it to reside. So I right clicked extract here and it's going to extract this demuel folder. I went ahead and renamed it demuel main script and inside are a bunch of bat files. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these bat files. I'm going to press control C to uh, copy them or you can right click one and hit copy. We're going to go back and we're going to go into our MAME 182B folder. So that's here. You're going to go into the 182B folder and you're going to open up your ROMs folder. So as you may notice by the name of my MAME folder, 182 or MAME 182 finally released. And with that came a gigantic update that Derek and I have been trying to, to figure out for literally the last about six hours. It's 5.09 PM right now. We've literally been doing it since like 11 AM. It no joke. 182 is a big update, but go ahead and press the control V in this section so that we can go ahead and paste our seven uh, bat files into this location. So pretty much uh, things have severely changed for MAME. Uh, the CHD pack, which is what all these folders are, uh, has not changed. Go ahead and download the 182 CHD merged uh, pack from our you know, favorite pleasureful domish website. Of course, I can't actually link there. I'm sorry. Uh, and then uh, when it comes to huh, the zips, it gets a little confusing. So before one eight for you know MAME one eight one and previous, so MAME one eight one one eight zero one seven nine one seven eight one seven seven one seven six etc and etc and etc going back until like one six four. There was the MAME split ROM pack and the MAME merged ROM pack. Now the MAME merged ROM pack, as most of you may know if you've imported with with LaunchBox before or have heard me tell this before, the merged pack doesn't quite work correctly with LaunchBox. Uh, that's just due to how we parse the information. Uh, there's less files in a merged pack um, and it merged pack will still work if you just use MAME, but since we're using a front end, 
we kind of need the split pack. We need those extra files, which is fine. So you've normally been able to just download a split pack before. Well, either the MAME 182 split set is corrupted or things have changed a little bit. So for the best compatibility, and I know this is going to get confusing, you don't download the merged set, you don't download the split set, you download the brand new non-merged set. It's kind of a combination of the two, but as best as I can describe it, it's just the most compatible version of a set. The downside to that, however, is that it now takes 120 gigabytes instead of 57 or 58 gigabytes. It takes roughly double the size. With that, however, comes probably the best compatibility. All of the BIOS are still there. All of the MAME and, and software list BIOS are still in the ROM pack, but that's not what I'm talking about. It has actually nothing to do with BIOS packs. Um, it has everything to do with parent and child ROMs. Now, most of that may be going all over a lot of your heads, and that's totally fine. You don't really need to understand that because LaunchBox and MAME and Demule takes care of all of that information for you. You don't need to know that. Just know that when you're downloading your MAME ROM set now, if you download a merged pack, obviously LaunchBox will have some issues and not import everything correctly, or you may need to do most, you may need to do a couple of different uh, imports, but then you'll have duplicates. A split set should have theoretically still worked, but either it's broken in 182 or it's corrupted or they compile it wrong or something, or they just changed or they did nothing wrong and the split pack has just changed and things have not updated around it yet. So download a non-merged ROM set. I will be making a new MAME tutorial surrounding this information probably some point soon. I don't know when exactly, uh, so I'm not going to give a time frame on that. But yeah, MAME has changed a little bit. So again, download the MAME 182 ROM set non-merged. Not the split, not the merged the non-merged that is you know a hyphenated word it's in the parentheses you'll see it if you look in the right locations now the domish site of pleasure is not the only place that has these sets but this is the, the easiest that i know of if you come across it in another location they may have compiled it differently they still may be using the split merged set and have not are not even transferring to this new form but if yeah, any site that uses uh, the sets based off of this site, or if you just go to this site directly, yeah, it got confusing. So I apologize. That's the best I could have explained it. If any of that confuses you guys, please let me know in the comments below. I am more than happy to answer any questions. And of course, you can leave uh, your thread questions over on our forums. Derek is there. Monkus is there. I am there. We'll, we're all there to try and help you guys out as much as we possibly can. Can. Oh, so with that confusing ass spiel out of the way, we have our CHD 182 merged set and we have our 182 ROM non merged set in our MAME 182B ROMs folder. And now we've copied our newly created bat files. So, what we're going to do, uh, you can run all seven of these bat files. But I'm mostly concerned with the Naomi bat files for the time being. I will come back to the Sammy set. I will come back to the, the Jellico set and I will come back to the Hikaru set. But for now, again, just Naomi. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and double click the bat files. You're going to let it run through this process. And once it's done, it will go ahead and close. So once you've run all four bat files or all seven bat files if you're deciding to just do all of it right now uh, go ahead and control click on uh, all four or all seven folders that you might have go ahead and right click cut we're going to go back over into our naomi folder and then i'm going to right click paste or control v to paste it here and then I went ahead and already renamed my Naomi folders. So I renamed underscore Naomi to Naomi from MAME 182. Uh, and then, of course, Naomi 2 from MAME 182. Uh, Naomi 
GD from MAME 182 and Naomi 2 GD from MAME 182. You don't have to rename them if you don't want to. You can just have the underscore Naomi folders if you'd like. But I went ahead and renamed them because theoretically, when MAME goes ahead and, goes ahead and updates to 183, uh, if these ROMs have changed, if anything from the Naomi sets have changed, you would theoretically want to run your bat file again and to just differentiate from the, the Naomi ROMs from different sets. I just went ahead and, and labeled them this way so that I know that these ROMs are from the MAME 182 set. Once you have these folders set up, then we are ready to go ahead and start importing our games into LaunchBox. So over in LaunchBox, we're going to go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. We're going to click Next, Add Files. I'm going to navigate to where I have my, my, my Naomi games. I'm going to click on a zip, Control-A to highlight them all. Click Open. Then I'm going to click Next. I'm going to name this Sega Naomi. Then we're gonna click next, choose an emulator. We're gonna go ahead and click add. Then you're gonna go ahead and type in your emulator name. Uh, you can name this really whatever you want, but I just went ahead and named it dmule 7 a Then you're gonna click browse here for the emulator application path. You're gonna to navigate to where we downloaded and extracted dmule, and you're gonna double click on the dmule.exe. In this emulator details page, we're also gonna check the box, no space before ROM, and use file name only without file extension or folder path. Both of these checkboxes are integral to DMIL running. At the very least, use file name only I know is integral to get it to run, but just go ahead and, and, and check both of these boxes. Um, it's going to help in the long run instead of hinder. In the associated platforms tab, you're going to go ahead and add four lines to your associated platform. You're going to double click to add a new name. You're going to type in Sega Naomi, and then the default command line parameter is going to be dash run equals Naomi space dash ROM equals, and then that's going to be the end of that command. It needs to be set up this exact way, and to make it easier for yourself, you can double click the default command line parameter. As long as you right click copy, you can go ahead and double click a new line and control V to paste it. If you use control C to copy it for whatever reason, it will copy more information than just what you've selected. So if you right click and copy, it will just copy what's selected. Go ahead and create Sega Naomi 2, Sega Naomi 2 GD, and Sega Naomi GD. Once you have all four platforms set up with the default command line parameter, go ahead and click OK. So now it should say choose an emulator, dmule 7 a and click next. Use the files in their current location. We're going to check the box for the LaunchBox Games database. We're going to click next, next. We're going to keep all the checkboxes for emo movies. We're going to click next. Then we're going to check force using MAME metadata. Then we're going to click next. In this, I'm going to make sure that all of these boxes are unchecked so that all of the games get imported. But then I'm going to also make sure that I, I, I check skip clones and prioritize this region, North America. If you import and you're missing a game from a specific region, just go ahead and rerun the import. But instead of prioritizing for the North American region, prioritize for Europe, Japan or world, whichever region you're missing games from. And then you'll have ROMs from both regions. Granted, you will have duplicates, but then you'll have ROMs from both regions. So with all of these boxes unchecked, prioritizing North America, we're going to go ahead and click next again. It's going to parse your ROM files. It's going to internalize and change all of the names. And then there you go. Go ahead and click finish and it will run through and download as much metadata as it can find. However, uh, it's not particularly complete uh, and it is using the arcade uh, set as a base. So go ahead and import the rest of your platforms, just like we did. You're going to use choose files. You're going to navigate to your Sega Naomi 2, say Sega Naomi 2 GD and Sega Naomi GD ROM locations. You're going to open all the files. You're going to name the platform Sega Naomi 2, Sega Naomi 2 GD and Sega Naomi GD. And then you're going to run through that. You're going to check the force meme import you're going to uncheck all the boxes prioritize north america and there you go so it's the same process for importing the other systems 
but we need to go to tools, manage platforms. We're going to scroll down to the Sega list. I'm going to double click on Sega Naomi, and then I'm going to click scrape as, and then I'm going to choose arcade from the drop down, and then I'm going to click OK. So when you did the initial imports for Sega Naomi and Sega Naomi 2, uh, there are platforms on the database with those names, but they're going to be rolled together in the future. So the scrape as function is what we need to do. When you labeled this Sega Naomi GD platforms, it should have uh, come up with scrape as below the, uh, the the system name because Sega Naomi GD is not a platform. It doesn't recognize it, so it automatically pops up asking for the scrape as. You can uh, choose arcade from the scrape as box when you import your Sega Naomi GD ROMs. Uh, so you can skip needing to come in here and set the scrape as in the edit platform screen for Sega Naomi GD and Sega Naomi 2 GD as well. Sorry if that's very confusing, uh, but that's the way I chose to do it, just so that you can get the most uh, metadata and media. However, if you've just changed the scrape as, so for Sega Naomi and Sega Naomi 2, uh, we just set it to scrape as arcade, uh, so it never pulled any metadata or media from the arcade section. So go ahead and click on a game, Control A to highlight them all. You're gonna go to tools, download metadata and media. We're gonna click next, next, keep all these boxes checked, keep all of these boxes checked, and then we're gonna, yes, but do not replace any existing fields or media. And then once it's ready to download, go ahead and click finish, and it will run through uh, like during the initial import and download all of the metadata and media that it can find. If you had to set the scrape as platform, after you've already imported your games, you're gonna go ahead and have to do the tools, uh, download media and metadata option for your games. If you checked the scrape as arcade during the initial import, then you don't have to download the that metadata and media afterwards. So if you did set the scrape as arcade for the GD and GD2, uh, that should have already pulled its metadata and media from the arcade section on the database already. So you shouldn't need to uh, redo it essentially. Now let's go ahead and configure Demuel. Go ahead and right click a game and open Demuel 07A. So personally, I go into config video and I like my, my screen to be a lot bigger. So my windows resolution is 1280 by 960 and on a 1080p display that fills up the screen fairly well. For the rest of these options, I've just left it as is. So we're gonna click on okay. Then we're gonna go to config, controls. And now I have my PS4 controller plugged in using input mapper. Uh, and you need to set these controls without a game loaded. Otherwise, if you try and come into the controls menu with a game loaded, Dmail will crash. So go ahead and click joy one. And then I'm gonna click on these buttons uh, to set my controls. So we're gonna start with digital. We're gonna click up and then up on my D-pad down on my D-pad, left on my D-pad, right on my D-pad. You're gonna go ahead and repeat the same functions for the left analog stick and then the right analog stick. The coin button I'm using as my back button. The button that's on the left called share on the PS4 button, it'd be the back button on a 360 controller. Uh, and then the start button I just put on start. As for these push one through eight, by default, it should be using your numpad, but since I'm using a controller, uh, push one is gonna go ahead and be my A button on my controller. Push two is my B button. Push three is my X button. Push four is my Y button. Push five is my left shoulder button. Push six is my right shoulder button. Push seven is my left trigger. And push eight is my right trigger. Shoulder buttons are in the front, triggers are in the back. So on a PS4 controller, L1, R1, those are your shoulder buttons. L2, R2, those are your triggers. And then I can set my service button to like L3 if I wanted, uh, just to have all of the buttons uh, doing something. But for the most part, I mean, that's fine the way it was set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay, and it's going to save all of those buttons to my controller. Then we're gonna go back into config, plugins and paths. So I'm using the DX11 video plugin. 
if you are on an older machine, you may have some issues using the DX11 plugin. So you may need to download an older version of Demuel if you don't have DirectX 11 installed on your machine. If you have an old enough graphics card uh, that's not using the DX11, I don't know if the DX11 old is like a backwards compatible version with the DirectX 9 libraries. I'm not sure. Somebody in the, in, in the comments might have to correct me there, but I'm fairly certain if you have a DirectX 9 only graphics card, uh, then you might not be able to use this. You might need to download the DirectX 9 drivers for Demuel or grab an older version that has uh, DirectX 9 uh, in there. And then down here where it says ROMs and BIOS is path. Uh, it should have the path to your um, Demuel ROMs folder. Go ahead and click add and we're going to go ahead and change this to our MAME folder. So I have downloaded uh, MAME 182B previously. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up this drop down and then I'm going to select my uh, MAME 182 ROMs folder instead of the default Demuel ROMs folder. This way, any game that requires a BIOS file or a CHD file will know where to look. The script only copied your ROM files and maybe some of the BIOS files, but uh, if, it, uh, if a game requires a BIOS file or a CHD file, we need to tell it to look in your MAME 182B ROMs folder, so that way all of your games can load up just fine. So now when you click this drop down menu, if you have two entries, one that says your MAME 182B ROMs folder and the other that says your Demuel ROMs folder, click on the Demuel ROMs folder from the, uh, from the list and go ahead and click delete. That way you only have the one path to your MAME 182B ROMs folder. Oh, with that, we've imported four different platforms. We've made sure to scrape them as arcade. We've downloaded uh, all of our CHD and MAME ROMs. Remember, the, the MAME ROMs for 182B or 182 is the non-merged set. We've imported all of them into the Naomi uh, platform uh, be thanks to Derek's script on the forums that took all of the uh, ROMs from the, the MAME set, copied them into their own folder, so that way we could move that to our Naomi folder and import those downloaded Demuel, we set up Demuel's uh, video options a little bit uh, just so that I could play it in a bigger resolution, though you could select a full screen if you would like. We've set up the controller so that way we can use our PS4 controller uh, with Demuel, but you can use a 360 controller, an Xbox One controller, or a PS3 controller, whichever works for you, or a Logitech controller for that matter. Uh, and we've also set up the ROMs and BIOS's path to be pointing towards our main 182B ROMs folder, not just the Demuel ROMs folder. <sighs> With that all said and done, we should now have games loading. All right, there's the Naomi splash screen. All right, now we press the backspace to add all of our coins and there we go oh apparently some of these may come up with the vmu emulation i'm just now seeing that that's pretty funny uh and most of these games are probably in japanese but there's enough english for you to be able to make your way through them uh so there's tons of games in here that are are really fun so when you get a chance to check out the naomi games in demuel you should definitely do that so there you go, that's how you get the Naomi games running with the Demuel emulator inside of LaunchBox. And I, again, I am so sorry if that was confusing. Uh, this is a much more uh, intensive task than usual, uh, but I tried to streamline this process as best as I could. If you have any questions at all about anything during this process, uh, please leave them in the comments section below. I am more than happy to answer all of your questions about LaunchBox or Naomi.
If you are a Patreon producer, then your name is now scrolling up on screen. Thank you all very much for deciding to support us over at our Patreon campaign. If you'd like to see your name in the credits for all of the videos that I do, or if you would like to see your name in the producer credits inside of the LaunchBox application, then head on over to the Patreon link in the description below and make sure that you pledge at the producer level tier. At the base tier, starting at $2, you start to get exclusive access to our videos and news and updates, things that are exclusive to our Patreon users only. At higher tiers, you start to unlock things like the producer level credits, the private Discord server access, and the level with the launch box team hangout. My name is Brad. The link to my channel is below. I do lots of gaming content and I'm working on revamping my channel, so I haven't made a video in a while, but I am working on rectifying that so to speak so keep an eye out there if you like other gaming types of videos remember fixing geeks to play more games and i'll see you next time have a good day